Time for our first hot topic. Address the consequences of the petrol price hikes. Review the minimum wage. Provide a workable roadmap to the CNG alternative. Fix the country's refineries and pay lecturer salary arrears. These are some of the demands of the Nigeria Labor Congress. And the failure of the government to meet these demands have led to one in strike with a major shutdown scheduled to take place at the end of this week. To avert the major shutdown, the federal government held a meeting with the NLC yesterday, that's Monday. That meeting, however, reportedly ended without a concrete resolution to the union's demands. We're taking a look at that right now with Mohammed Abdullahi. Public relations analyst has joined us from Niger State. Good morning to you, Mohammed. Uh, good morning. It's always my pleasure. Good morning, Nigerians. Pleasure to have you. Mohammed. you've followed the, the, the development. Tell us your assessment of the dialogue that took place between the federal government yesterday and Labour. Yes, it's, um, it's, it's nothing new from what uh, have been occurring in our country in the past decade, where um, the federal government um, always waited the very last minute uh, when the labor unions threaten strike before they call up meeting and then most often than not the meetings end up in stalemate you know both parties not to really agreeing to a concrete decision like you rightly mentioned um so yesterday was not uh, something any different um again uh, I think the challenges again is the fact that you uh, Nigerians already know that uh, the, the labor union is uh, a kind of um, a factionalized, uh, factionalized at the moment where uh, we have the Nigerian Labor Congress, NLC, which has been in the forefront over the years of um, pursuing the workers' rights. And then we have the um, trade union where we have uh, we have the Trade Union Congress, uh, the TUC, which is uh, which supposedly and originally supposed to be part of the uh, Labor Union Congress, but uh, uh, for some few years at the moment, they've been having a kind of uh, uh, headlong diversification. I mean, differences with the labor union. So uh, they, uh, they they are they are they are being different. I mean. I mean from from the lab, um, NLC's decisions, they are very different. Most times, whenever they call up strike, they tend to not uh, join. They tend to most times, if I'm not mentioning what, follow straight along what the federal government is doing. So that creates a kind of a dichotomy and a kind of challenging uh, uh, decisions for 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 the labor union uh, management and leadership. Uh, Generally, so what am I trying to say? I'm saying yes. Um, in as much as there is a kind of differences and there is a kind of a factionalization in in the workers' union, I think uh, the federal government or the government at large will continue to have its way in uh, in in not um, fulfilling its promise to Nigerian workers and then some of the rights and some of the privileges that the NLC is uh, fighting for perhaps might not be fulfilled because. They are not working with one house. They have a divided house. Like I said, the NLC and the TUC have not been getting along for a while. Uh, if you remember the, the last meeting that was even called before yesterday, only the TUC attended. Mm -hmm. The NLC did not attend before a special meeting was also arranged for, for the NLC. So with that kind of um, divided house, the federal government um, will always have its way and then it's... Uh, it's not a win-win situation or it's, it's going to be a bad situation for, Niger for Nigerian workers and even Nigerian masses uh, as a whole. So in a nutshell, the meeting yesterday um, didn't really produce anything concrete. Uh, perhaps uh, by the end of this month or maybe latest uh, in, in a week's time, Nigerian Labor Congress might have no option than to uh, call up an indefinite strike. Well, the TUC also did not join the NLC for the warning strike, which they carried out um, a while ago. Why do you think the TUC and the NLC are not on the same page? I think I think it's a simple fact. There is um, uh, there, there there is 
I, uh, I think it's a simple fact that there is a kind of um, puzzle of leadership, uh, both parties uh, trying to feel uh, perhaps they are superior. Uh, and the TUC is not wanting to to bow to the uh, labor, con- I mean the Nigerian Labor Congress. Yeah, even though the, the NLC has been there for donkey years, the TUC is supposed to be a subsection. I mean a sub party of the NLC. So I, I see, in my own opinion, I see a kind of tussle of leadership. Uh, each party be trying to superimpose itself uh, ahead of the other, and then. Each party trying to play the part of uh, being more important, you know, and then uh, federal government is saying, okay, if the NLC is trying to play uh, a, a very delicate game, we can as well negotiate with the TUC. Don't 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 forget that TUC also the the trade union congress also encompasses a whole lot of other uh, sub uh, workers group and so on and so forth. So they are quite strong on their own, uh, the, 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 their reach is very wide and so on and so forth. So um, to answer your question directly, I see, like like I keep mentioning, a tussle of leadership between both uh, unions, and which is so, so unfortunate. I think if both unions come together and... Uh, ...moment where we have a divided house, uh, both parties or both union um, trying to outdo each other and trying to be more, uh, s- trying to be smarter than each other, presenting themselves to the federal government in a divided way. Okay, so the the NLC, the NLC is of the opinion that none of the demands that they've given out, none of the demands they've made, have been met, and they are very dogged this time. And they are very, very um, certain that if nothing happens within the next four days to fix this, that they're definitely go, going to go on this strike. How effective a strike or how effective will their strike be if they do not go in unison with the TUC, do you think? Uh, it's going to be very challenging. Remember, the president is actually out of the country since yesterday or two days ago for the United Nations General Assembly in New York. In New York. And in fact, many I'm, I'm surprised that the Minister of Labor is not uh, part of that delegation. Uh, so many of the uh, big wigs in the country, uh, the president, the vice president, uh, many ministers uh, and even governors are out of the country at the moment. So in fact, it's, it's not a good time to pick up the fight, I mean, for NLC and the TUC. Uh, but having said that, yes, um, so many of the, uh, with all the, you know, big wigs of the government out of the country, I see it as very impossible that um, any agreement could be reached at the moment uh, because uh, whether the Minister of Labor is around to negotiate he he needs uh, the the buy-in of the president, uh, you know, to ratify the negotiation and the agreement uh, at the moment. So um, uh, it's it's quite a kind of impossibility for the government and uh, NLC to reach uh, uh, an agreement at the moment. And then to answer your questions directly. Um, over the years, strike action haven't been quite effective for uh, the Nigerian workers and the matters at large, to be very, to be very candid. Uh, I am of the opinion, and I keep saying it, that um, the NLC and, the, and other unions should actually uh, look for other means uh, to drive in their messages to government, uh, you know, rather than incessant strike here and there, particularly when over the years, if you look at it, it's not been really effective. Uh, what it does is just ground activities in some part of the country, or perhaps at best, all of the part of the country, economic activities are grounded. And then after two weeks, three weeks, we go back to the status quo and so on and so forth. So I think there should be the, uh, other effective means rather than strike action, one strike or definite strike that uh, we should be able to pass uh, our messages. Uh, I, I will want to, some of the some of the actions I am thinking are, are quite a bit radical, so I want to mention, but I will leave it to the leadership of the NLT uh, to review over the years um, what they've been doing. It's, it's not really effective, and that is why 
government at all levels, uh, particularly the federal government, are you know devising means uh, to have a divisive union, so that um, one other union or one other part will um, fall into what they are saying, and even while the NLC is really struggling, uh, pursuing strike. If TUC, TUC also have a large family. If TUC do not follow suit, then the strike becomes a bit, uh, not even a bit, very ineffective. So, um, yes, it, it's, it's not going to be very effective if TUC do not join. If they do not have a one house, like I keep mentioning, and I keep clamoring for, uh, the, 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 the strike definitely will not be effective because, like I told you earlier, TUC have a whole lot of... Uh, other subunions as well across the state. So, in fact, it will be almost 50% of the NLC members might not be joining the strike or even more. Uh, so, what effectiveness does that uh, bring to the table if more than 50% of uh, the union are not uh, joining? So, it's important that NLC goes back to the drawing board, talks to TUC, uh, they have a common ground, uh, sort out their own differences, and then aside the strike, look for other options to hold the government to the jugular, you know, so that they'll be able to um, deliver on their own promises and the agreements uh, that have been made, uh, whether now or in the past. Well, critics have berated the NLC led by Joe Ajero, and he does appear poised now to prove a point um, that he's someone that should be taken seriously. However, I hear you when you say that strike may not be the best option. However, how would you say Simon Lalong, the Minister of Labor, has been able to do this job uh, of dialoguing with Labor? H how would you assess him as a minister? So the, the minister is very new. Uh, the minister is just uh, perhaps less than a month in office. So uh, I think there is, um, there is really no guideline now. Of, uh, uh, there, is, there is really nothing to really review the minister with in terms of his uh, action so far um so i think um well he's starting with he's starting with what you may describe as baptism of fire would you say he's responding appropriately his personality do you think he's suited for this kind of for this ministry he's been thrown into uh, yeah, as a former governor um for eight years, I think he's suited for negotiations. But uh, that's what basically you do. You negotiate and keep negotiating with people, uh, you know, the citizens and so on. So I think he's suited uh, as an elder statesman, uh, someone who is above 60 years. So uh, he's suited. But like I said, uh, for me, I think it, um, uh, it needed more time. Uh, he's just thrown into the, he's just thrown under the bus. So he, it, it requires him to actually study some of the agreements, some of the actions. I mean, the past actions of the, uh, uh, of the unions, and come up with, with his own strategy. Like I said, it doesn't have to. What government have been doing over the years is like wait for NLC to say, okay, we want to do this. We are planning a warning strike. We are planning an indefinite strike. Before for reacting, we, we, it's, it's too reactionary. I, I believe government should be, should, should be more proactive. So that's what I expect from the Labour Minister henceforth. I mean, perhaps maybe every quarter you have a dialogue with the union, not when they say they want to go on strike, no. You have a dialogue, you have like a calendar of dialogue, perhaps every quarter or every two months, depending on what is suitable, so that you keep reviewing what you discuss with the agreement and then the way forward. So that in that way, we will have less of this warning strike and indefinite strike by, uh, by, by, by the unions. If we keep reviewing what we've done and where we think we should be in the nearest future, I think that that, that should be a better uh, strategy. So uh, let's give the minister the, the, the benefit of the doubt that he'll be able to carry out the actions and the and the duties appropriately in the nearest future. But three more days to the deadline. Labour says uh, they're open to more talks if uh, if called uh, for more dialogue. Um, so I, I guess we just have to um, watch and see how it all plays out and see whether they'll resolve this before the 22nd. Uh, right? We'll just watch and see. Hopefully, in Nigeria, everything is very possible. Remember, I mean, on the 21st, there might be a meeting that will hold up until 4 a.m. Of, of 22nd. So we always do that. So it's very possible. Do you think Nigerians, 
Do you think Nigerians want this strike action? Do you think Nigerians want NLC to go for a total shutdown? Um, interestingly, uh, in my own opinion, I think Nigeria, Nigerians want it. Yeah, um, I think. Uh, yes, my own little discussion with people here and there. I think Nigerians want it. They want to see actions from the NLC. Uh, they want to see like uh, people are not being taken granted that everything that government has thrown upon Nigerians in these uh, few months have just been taken hook, line, and sinker. So I think Nigerians want it, but I don't necessarily feel is the best option, like I say. Uh, you know, with all the hardship here and there, we want to we like um, lock up everything in terms of the economy, close up shops, uh, lock down the country. I don't think it's the best. So, but again, uh, Nigerians want, to, uh, want the government to feel like uh, a little pinch uh, you know, concerning what every Nigerian is feeling at the moment in terms of economic woes and challenges. So, yeah, uh, I think Nigerians want it, but it is not necessarily the best for the for the, for, for the country at the moment. Mohammed Abdullahi, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. My pleasure. We can continue this conversation on our social media platforms. Our earlier interview on NLC's meeting with the federal government subscribe to our platforms on social media and also connect with me on Facebook on Menor TV Maureen Nwezigwe and Maureen Menor 23 on X that's the much we have for you today on the program I am Maureen Menor Nwezigwe thanks for watching join us tomorrow for another episode of The Breakfast Nyamgo will be here on behalf of the crew I say have a pleasant morning <laughs>